Is this table embarrassing to show to you? Yes. Did I think maybe I'll just buy a new one and then I won't have to admit that this is the state my table has got to in the garden? Yes. But if I don't try and fix it, then who will? So let's see how much of a makeover I can give to this very shabby patio table and benches. After I spruced up the garden with some plants, I put in this new decking and painted the fence, there was one massive eyesore left to deal with. I'm going to call this the series of things I'm embarrassed to admit exist in my garden. I think this might be the summer of rain because first things first, we needed to move this patio set inside and let it dry out. When you've got wood grain going in two different directions, like on this table, you need to be careful when you get close to the edges so that you're not sanding against the grain. Between the table and the two benches, this did take a long time, but the 80 grit sandpaper really broke through that old paint very quickly. This table has seen all sorts from painting Halloween pumpkins to staining the new decking, and while you don't need to remove everything and get back to raw wood, getting it as smooth as possible is really going to help with the finish in the long run. You need to listen to music, a podcast, an audiobook while you're sanding. Give your brain a distraction. I have a safety tip for you. If you have something like headphones like these, they fit perfectly under ear defenders. So what you should do, pop your headphones in. Start playing whatever it is you're going to listen to, your music, your podcast. Then put your ear defenders on. They fit perfectly underneath. And then put your sander on and start working away. Do not change your volume. You're going to struggle to hear in the same way that you would have done before. But if you turn that volume up, then it's getting dangerous for your ears. And even when you have an extractor on your sander, this is why it's a good idea to wear a mask. Look at all that paint that didn't get sucked into the extractor and is just flying everywhere. Some people like to clean before sanding, some people like to clean after sanding. Really, the important thing is that you do clean. This is just a mixture of warm, soapy water. This was the final step of the day for me. I made sure to get this all washed so it would have overnight to dry before getting on to the painting step. For my primer, I've chosen Zinza 123. This one is water-based, so it will work perfectly with the paint I've chosen for my table and benches because that is water-based too. So they will marry together perfectly. When given the choice, which is most of the time, I really prefer using water-based paints and primers and products like that because it's just so much easier to clean up at the end of the day. While this is a large surface area, you might be inclined to do a roller. I went with a brush initially because of all those ridges between the slats to help get some of the paint and primer down the side so you didn't just see the white on top and then the brown of the wood at the side. You'll see with the painting step that I did start using a roller as well but I was using both at the same time to get the paint in the ridges with a brush and then get it smoothed out on top with a roller. If you've ever used the red Zinza primer, which is brilliant for covering knots in pine and things like that, this is the water-based sister product. And if you struggle with headaches from fumes and things, this might be a great alternative because the bin product is quite smelly, but this one is much more gentle. For some reason, I decided I was doing this primer with my hand held behind my back like I was a butler out of Downton Abbey. <laughs> and I'm quite sure I would have been below stairs rather than upstairs. How about you? The paint colour we're going with is called English Willow. And when you first open it, it always needs a stirring because who knows how long this has been sat on the shop's shelves. However, even after stirring up, it still looks like something you may have found in a swamp. <laughs> Not perfect. I'm going to trust the process on this one. If you're going for a completely brand new kind of feel for your 
renovated patio furniture, then you might want to use some wood filler on any of the larger cracks or gaps. I don't even know how old this patio set is. Personally, I'm giving this patio set another lease of life rather than trying to make it look like it's the start of one. You are potentially causing yourself more work or more layers of paint needed when you're doing a coat of primer because of course in this case I'm starting from white which is the hardest colour to cover. Going on top of the original grey if it was in good condition would have got me to that darker more solid green much quicker and I'm sure probably would have needed a coat fewer. Using a roller, it always feels like it thins out the paint more, maybe just because you have a bit more control with the brush and how thick it is. You never want thick coats of paint that's not going to dry nicely, but finding the balance between a thick enough coat of paint so you're actually making good progress, but it being thin enough to coat nicely is an art. So it's the next day and I'll be honest, I'm a little bit disappointed by the coverage of the first coat of paint. The first coat of paint always looks terrible, um, but I don't know if it's because it's exterior paint, I thought maybe it would have a little bit more to it, uh, but alas no. So we're probably going to look at three coats of paint in total, I'm going to guess, but let's get cracking, coat two. I deliberately went with a colour for the patio table and benches because I didn't want to choose a stain and have it either match with the decking and be a lot of the same colour or clash with the decking, which would be even worse. This is still quite a subtle pale green, which I think will pair nicely with the pale yellow of the shed. It's more of a blend in rather than stand out kind of paint colour, which I think is going to be perfect for what I'm using it for. It's the end of coat three, we're looking really close to finish now. There's just a few bits that might need a tiny touch up, otherwise pretty much there. So I washed up my brushes, calling it quits for the day, and then we'll see what tomorrow brings. And look who's here, last seen admiring the new decking. And a reminder of what we started with. A pretty great transformation. I also love how the green complements the red of the decking boards, but it has really given it a second or third or who knows how many lease of life. A fresh new look just in time for summer. Thank you so much for watching, please consider subscribing, until next time, thanks again, bye!